Important news, global war is on the horizon as NATO marshals half a million troops as the US institutes conscription. Can't believe I'm saying that. It's been floated in our country too. They're normalizing conscription across the world. Also though, Justin Timberlake has been arrested or at least arraigned for being drunk uh, driving under the influence, not being drunk under the influence. You can't. The drunkenness is the influence part of that acronym. Let's have a look at that. Handcuffed in custody, being led by police to his arraignment on a drunk driving charge. That picture exclusively by DailyMail.com. A lot of drama, a lot of grandeur, a lot of majesty, warped majesty. He was seen. He's been. There he is. What has he done? Dun, 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 dun. Exclusive Daily Mail. It is important, but also I'd like to draw your attention to this. There are half a million NATO troops that are ready, highly ready, on the border, waiting to go to war with Russia. An official with the North Atlantic Alliance says the bloc has exceeded its goal of placing 300,000 soldiers on standby for a potential war with Russia. The announcement comes as NATO members significantly escalate support for Ukraine, bringing the alliance closer to a direct war with Moscow. Or as you would say in America, Moscow. Never understood that, but you do do it. NATO chief Jens Stoltenberg said, allies are offering forces to NATO's command at a scale not seen in decades. Today we have half a million troops at high readiness across all domains, significantly more than the goal that was set at the 2022 Madrid summit. Is this good news? What's that bit? It says significantly more than the goal that was set. So what is the goal actually? Is the goal the troops or is the goal the war? The alliance hit its goal as members significantly ratcheted up support for Kiev in recent weeks. The US and several other nations also recently gave a green light for Ukraine to use their weapons to strike targets inside Russia. President Vladimir Putin recently blasted Western leaders for placing the world on the brink of a larger war. We've come dangerously close to the point of no return, he said. Dangerously close! To the point of no return. Whoever you are, whether you are Jan 6 was an insurrection or Jan 6 was a great day out. Whether your BLM were riots and should have been banned or BLM was a necessary measure to confront the realities of police brutalities. Whether you're a Keir Starmer, what a guy, or Nigel Farage, don't even try. If there's going to be an apocalypse, it's going to involve you. We are dangerously close to the point of no return. But the big question is... Is Justin Timberlake also dangerously close to the point of no return? With no bail, early this morning in the ritzy enclave of Sag Harbor, New York. Hey, I hope you brought your camera. His arrest for DUI comes just days after Justin's world tour pulled up stakes out of Florida. You do wonder, don't you, if the world of celebrity needs to continue quite so fervidly given that we've got some pretty important things to contemplate and consider together. Amidst all this salaciousness and stomping and the giddiness and excitement of these distractions, isn't it worth considering for a minute that there are some pretty serious things for us to countenance? Let me hear you sing Justin was pulled over this morning at 12.37 a.m. Hmm, 12.37 a.m. What was the exact time this happened? By police after he blew a stop sign. He's going past the stop sign, 12.37 a.m. You better not have been drinking, Justin. And was swerving. This new surveillance video shows him driving on Main Street. Quite well, I think. I mean, whether he's been drinking or not, he's handling Main Street, I would say, responsibly. About a half mile from where he was pulled over. The video posted to Hamptons.com. Our source tells us Justin was cocktailing here at the American Hotel in Sag Harbor. That was ironically right next to the local police headquarters and the courthouse. That's not ironically, that's conveniently. You could go directly from the American Hotel to the police house and fire department, because it does also say fire department there. And then he could go to the court. It's actually convenient rather than ironic. Look. Let's not get too caught up in this. I'd like to know further details. I'd like to scrutinize with more detail. I want to get to the bottom 
of exactly why Justin's doing this and what his wife might be doing. There's so much more to understand. But I think it's also worth just considering for a minute whether or not the next elections could potentially be a moment where we, I don't know, somehow oppose the goals of globalism. And in, in this instance, I mean globalism in the form of NATO, which are meant to be just a defence keeper. They're a defence organisation. That's what NATO is about. It's a defence alliance. It's an alliance that's about defence. Why they've got half a million people, why they seem to be issuing statements. It, it's, uh, there's a lot of stuff going on that seems to be beyond the remit of defence. The US took a significant step towards preventing a future American president from curtailing weapons transfers to Ukraine by allowing NATO to coordinate the arms shipment. So that's not going to be handled by the US. Your tax dollars are going to pay for it, but now NATO are going to coordinate the shipments. Washington and some of its allies are concerned that former President Donald Trump will end military aid and seek a diplomatic settlement to the war should he return to office. Oh no! <laughs> Donald Trump is seeking... A diplomatic settlement. Don't you dare. Don't you dare seek a diplomatic settlement. I was looking forward to that war. I've been so coached and coerced into the idea that Donald Trump is bad and nothing good could ever come from Donald Trump that the words seek a diplomatic settlement have got to become objectionable to me. Donald Trump, day one, diplomatic settlement, day two. Rachel Maddow, is she going to go into one of these internment camps? I mean, like, what is it now that we're concerned about? I'll tell you what I'm concerned about. Justin Timberlake, exactly what that guy is up to. Where he was arraigned just hours later. Joining us from our affiliate in New York, Fox 5, Jody Goldberg, who's in Sag Harbor. Big summer population, very small town. It's not even a town to sip and drive. To say word spreads quickly here... That would be an understatement. The consensus is, why didn't he just take an Uber? Yeah, why didn't he just take an Uber? Yeah! They're really enthusiastic about this story about Justin Timberlake, aren't they? Justin Timberlake used to be on that Mickey Mouse Club. Justin Timberlake, Britney Spears. Justin Timberlake, NSYNC. Justin Timberlake. I met him that time when I was doing Trolls. Perfectly nice person. Perfectly nice human being. This isn't a condemnation or attack on Justin Timberlake per se, but the entire nexus of interests that are coalescing around this matter. Pretty extraordinary, isn't it? What are these institutions of media? What is the function of the judicial? We can't continue to bring you this beautiful content without the support of our partners. Today's sponsors are American Financing. Are you trapped in a cycle of debt from monthly expenses and high credit card interest rates? I'm sick of it. American Financing, a trusted partner of ours and potentially yours now in helping people achieve financial freedom. They help homeowners tap into equity and on average their customers save, wait for it, $854 a month. That's equivalent to receiving $10,000 in an annual rise or perhaps being given it by some sort of fairy or goblin. It's a straightforward process. You could close your loan in just 10 days. By acting today, you might not even have to pay your next mortgage payment. That sounds good if you're under a lot of pressure. To regain control of your finances is a too significant aim to simply ignore. This opportunity costs nothing. Call 866-574-2500. That's 866-574-2500. Or visit AmericanFinancing.net slash Russell. It's only available for Americans. How come Justin Timberlake gets cuffed in front of his body whenever I've been arrested in that country? They put my hands behind my back. Why didn't he have a driver? He told police he just had a martini and he was headed home. Obviously, he didn't make it because he was pulled over. He was driving a 2025 BMW. He had a Tennessee driver's license. He handed it over to the officer and he had bloodshot and glassy eyes. He smelled like alcohol. So after he performed poorly on that roadside sobriety test, he refused three times to take a chemical test. Hmm, you need some sort of legislation to prevent Justin Timberlake being able to avoid using simple refusal and non-compliance participating in these tests. And you also need some administrative regulatory body to step in as well in the event that democracy could be used to bring about like a diplomatic settlement to war. The bloc adopted the new policy during a meeting of NATO defence ministers on Friday. One official told AFP that the move was meant to prevent Trump from changing US policy. It is about Trump proofing. And that is what Stoltenberg says, protecting it from the winds of political change. The winds of political change means the will of the people. 
Remember when our Lord and Saviour said that man is not made for the Sabbath, the Sabbath is made for man. NATO is not going to be in charge of everything. NATO aren't meant to be making decisions about whether or not you go to war. NATO are meant to be merely administrating, along with your government, along with your supposed leaders. The idea, in fact, of leaders as servants is an idea that we might want to investigate. Just wonder what Justin Timberlake's up to now and I wonder what his wife's doing. Justin's attorney, Ed Burke Jr., tells us that refusal automatically suspends his license by the DMV in New York. Justin's next court date is set for July 26th, the same day he's scheduled to perform overseas in Poland. A Poland in NATO does make you wonder, doesn't it? Have a look at this. Our government is planning a big draft, conscripting millions of young Americans for an even bigger war. I call to your attention a democratic amendment to the National Defense Authorization Act, the NDAA, which was slipped into the almost trillion dollar Pentagon war spending bill. Trillion dollars. Trillion dollars. I just feel like that's quite a lot of money, isn't it? It is war a priority for you right now. You know what I'm beginning to sense is that what people care about at the moment are protecting national borders and not being involved in foreign wars. Would they dare to hold a referendum on that? Would they dare to hold a referendum where they said, you know, I know in your country, America, people are talking about immigration. Immigration has been spoken about more in my country. And I've always felt that part of any edict around immigration should include the following. An assurance that the people that live in the country currently are willing to get along as best they can, freely, autonomously together. The recognition that there are invasive forces of a more pervasive and insidious nature that need to be controlled as well. Global corporate forces that have at least as much negative impact as unchecked immigration and a commitment for nations like yours and mine, NATO countries, to stop their imperialistic gambits abroad, to stop intervening in foreign countries, to stop saying, they need democracy here. We've got to give them some democracy. They're crying out for democracy. Who wants to give your life for BlackRock? What is the ideology you're being invited to die for now? Trillion dollar Pentagon war spending bill in itself pretty concerning, but the fact that it is also being used in conjunction with a kind of sly draft proposal is yet more alarming. So when the NDAA passes as early as this week, Congress will have taken steps to make automatic conscription the law of the land. Notwithstanding that the automatic draft provision will go into effect in a year, a presidential order invoking emergency powers and or an act of Congress could readily move millions from their civilian lives to the front lines of a war. There is no other conceivable reason to require more than 16 million American males to be automatically registered for the draft other than to prepare for a large scale war. So 500,000 NATO troops on high readiness for war. That seems pretty aggressive. Putin saying this is a significant advancement. NATO, Trump proofing arms shipments. Putin saying don't use American made weapons inside Russian territory. America in Biden previously committing to never doing that. And now, you know, now doing it. Another line crossed and conscription being slyly introduced. What does that sound like to you? It sounds like preparation for war. And I can't help thinking how Justin Timberlake and Jessica Biel going to deal with this. Justin is currently with his family, who is also on the East Coast. His wife, actress Jessica Biel, spotted yesterday in Central Park shooting a new Amazon series, The Better Sister, with Elizabeth Banks. Both Justin and Jessica had just posted Father's Day messages 48 hours ago before Justin's arrest. We're going to get married again tonight. There have been concerns in the past about Justin's drinking. In 2019, he apologized to his wife after he was seen holding hands with his Palmer co-star during a drunken night in New Orleans. In 2014, on Oprah's Masterclass, Justin talked about a booze-fueled night during a performance where audience members threw bottles of liquor on stage. I drank a whole bottle of whiskey that night. Get it under control, Justin. Get it under control. 
According to the new automatic draft law, undocumented immigrants between the ages of 18 and 26, numbering at least 1.5 million, could also be conscripted if it were to apply to women as well as men. Conscription is under discussion in Germany and Italy, while at least nine other European Union countries already use the practice to replenish their armed forces. We've got a lot to consider. One, half a million NATO troops. Two, NATO future-proofing against any possible electoral denial of their plans for global war. Three, draft happening again. 2024, where we're told that what we should be most concerned about are various cultural issues and demographic squabbling. We're on the precipice of war. And of course, is Justin going to be okay? Is he going to be all right? Is everything going to be okay? That's one of the questions. What I would say potentially is this might be a time for a radical revision of our worldview where we might have to start looking at domestic political issues and global political issues and the way that institutions such as the media and the judiciary are currently being used, the tendency of most democracies to offer you two potential candidates or even parties that are broadly comprised of compliant individuals that will support the bureaucracies that are ultimately controlled by global corporate forces. And if you care about controlling your borders, you should be protecting your nations from the most dangerous force of all global corporatism and these peculiar bureaucratic bodies that are able to exert astonishing power like NATO amassing an army without consent like your government slyly insidiously reintroducing conscription without it being really queried or questioned that should be a bigger concern than Justin Timberlake's private life and potential personal problems but that's just what i think why don't you let me know what you think in the comments and the chat baby because it's got to be discussed hey this is exciting we've got a great partner today it's rumble but beyond rumble it's rumble's latest venture let me ask you first are you a sleepy joe type character with zero cognitive performance struggling to muster focus and brain power for basic things like running the united states of america you've got to stop drinking woke liberal coffee that hates you in your way of life and start your day by drinking rumble's very own 1775 coffee this is going to be the best tasting coffee you've ever had Seriously good, ethically sourced from a family farm in the high altitude mountains of Bolivia. Not in the Bolivian lowlands run not by a family, but by a single man still living with a pet. No! Instead of waking up and drinking your big corporation-owned woke ideology coffee that's probably making you sick from the pesticides it's sprayed with, try Rumbles 1775 Revolutionary Coffee. Support freedom of speech. Build a parallel economy that actually values you and loves you. My favourite? It's dark, of course. I've always found the lure of the dark irresistible. I'm sorry, how can I stay mad at you? Well, you're just going to have to wait over there for a little while. Level up your morning routine with a 1775 coffee. Sleep all night knowing your hard-earned dollar dues are going towards supporting freedom-loving creators like me on Rumble. Visit 1775coffee.com now. Pick up your first bag. Use the code BRAND to save 10% on your first order. Oh, come on. Why choose, you know? Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to see more uncensored content where free speech can flourish, join our live stream. Click the link right here to watch the next video if you want to or become a member of a growing movement. Download the Rumble app and you'll be informed every time we make a new piece of content. Stay free.